Sex workers, what is the saddest story you have with a client? I once spent an evening with a very old man who had booked me because I looked just like his late wife when she was young. He missed her terribly and just wanted to lie down with me, hold me, and pretend I was her. Another one was a man who was paralyzed from the neck down after a swimming accident when he was 16. He couldn't feel anything other than his face, so we just talked and kissed. He was an artist and he painted these beautiful watercolors using his mouth and a paintbrush, and he had a little straw he used to control the TV. I remember him saying he was really into Studio Ghibli films at the time, so we talked about those. It was so heartbreaking hearing about how little physical contact he received and how rare it was for someone to touch his face and stroke his hair. He spoke about how hard it is when people are scared to touch you, even loved ones and friends. I hope, wherever these men are, that they are well and happy and are finding the solace and physical affection they need. A man basically paid me to compliment him daily. He had just gotten out of an extremely toxic and abusive relationship and had the lowest self-esteem I'd ever seen. I'd comfort him, listen to him, help him, and constantly let him know he was a lot better than what he thought he was. I had to break ties when he started to assume that I was doing it out of love. I cared about him, sure, but I didn't love him, nor did I seek a relationship with him. After a while, I returned half his money and wished him luck. My friend has a client who comes to see her, and he pays her to just sit and talk and make fake sexy photos that he can show to his friends. He is gay but can't come out because he is a Japanese salaryman and would be disowned and probably lose his job. Their arrangement turned into a friendship and she gives him English lessons during the supposed sexy time. It's a win-win because he hasn't got time to study as they are literally worked to death in Japan. But when they go on salaryman night outs, it's very common for them to sleep with prostitutes and go to brothels, so it's a good opportunity for him to study English. He says he wants to move to the U.S. because, and get this, he wants to be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. I had a client who was a psychiatrist. The first time we met, I overstayed because he was so pleasant and easy to talk to. After almost a year of seeing him a few times a month, I learned he has a benzos addiction. Yep, a doctor with a drug problem. He'd been taking 10 to 12 milligrams of lorazepam every day for years and couldn't stop. He became somewhat of a confidant for me. It was a mutually beneficial relationship too, as we threw all our emotions on the table. Unlike the rest of my clients, I wasn't acting when I saw him. We talked about our lives, our problems, etc. He finally managed to kick the habit, as well as quit alcohol. He was the happiest I'd ever seen him. Around this time, I told him I was planning on leaving the business. He was sad, but understood, and we planned to keep in touch because, like I said, he wasn't just a client. So I quit, moved away, and got busy. I was exhausted, but pushing through. I thought about him and wanted to give him a call, so I googled him to find his office number, only to see that he passed away a few days before. I lost it. I scoured the obituary, searching for answers, and found a post from his daughter. He unalived himself because he was struggling with benzos again. It broke me. I still wonder what would have happened if I hadn't waited months to get in touch. Rest in peace, Elliot. Thanks for six years of friendship, being my favorite shoulder, and the many pairs of socks. People often think that my job is all about sex, but it's not. Most of the time, it's about companionship and reliving past moments or even just ignoring emotions at the time. I was hired by a middle-aged woman who just wanted a companion for the evening. I met her at the bar and she gave me her card. She told me to treat her and that my name was Bill. So I brought her drinks and paid for her meal. Then we went to watch a movie. Then we took an Uber back to her place. I only found out why she does this after we spent the night. Her husband died about four years ago and when she's having a bad day, she likes to pretend going out on a date with someone that reminds her of her husband. I had a call from my escort agency at about 6.30 a.m. I was still sleeping, so I ignored my phone, but they kept calling. I finally picked up, agreed on an astronomical hourly rate, and the client agreed. I showed up to his room at about 7.30 a.m. To my surprise, he's a tall, fit guy in his late 20s. He gave me my full agreed rate, and I could tell he had been drinking. We're sitting on the bed and I'm trying to ask him questions to keep the mood light and friendly. Suddenly, he starts to cry. I was so shocked I didn't know what to do, especially since he's this macho guy. I figured out he was in the army. 
He told me he was in town for his father's funeral and his emotions were just hitting him and he just wanted someone to be there with him. I stayed the whole time and I let him talk and grieve. Then I held him for a bit. We didn't do anything sexual except a kiss at the end when my driver picked me up. He gave me his number and told me to call him if I ever visit his city. I still have his number today. One time I was doing a VIP session and this dude told me to stop dancing and basically broke down in front of me, telling me he was only there because his friends dragged him along to cheer him up. From what he told me, he caught his wife in bed with another man and they just got divorced. He told me his now ex-wife told his kids that he was the one cheating and his kids hated him now. I've never felt so bad for a total stranger all my life. Stripper here. I had a young, attractive, wealthy guy take me to VIP for an hour just to listen to Bruce Springsteen songs. He just sat back, closed his eyes, and sang along to every word. He told me that when he was a kid, he grew up in a very oppressive household where his likes and interests were discouraged and disregarded. He listened to Springsteen and his lyrics gave him the hope and strength to eventually run away as a teenager. Since then, he'd had so much success and joy, but he just really wanted to share his story and the music he loved with somebody that night. There were times when guys paid me to do something but ended up just wanting to chat instead. I hate talking about myself, so I always ask them questions about themselves. They told me they appreciated it and that it felt like someone cared because I brought up something they mentioned last session. I was also on that egirl.gg site, and a lot of dudes paid me for games but really just wanted to talk. I always felt bad, but these dudes are giving me upwards of $10 to $20 at a time to just sit in a Discord call. I went in expecting to do nudes and stuff, and it turns out almost every guy who paid me just wanted company. It felt bad. No one should be that lonely. My friend was getting paid a set rate of $2,200 a month to eat dinner twice a week over FaceTime with this guy who traveled a lot internationally for business. He just wanted to watch her eat. Sometimes the calls would happen at irregular hours, but he was courteous and would let her know in advance. He would often even take the step of ordering food to her place if he wanted to share a specific meal. Turns out it was nothing sexual, which she kept waiting for it to morph into. The guy just wanted company. When he eventually found somebody to settle down with, he sent her a parting gift of about $25,000 to help her pay off some of her student loans. A young man wanted to hire me for a role play because his high school sweetheart had gone to college far away, and despite them promising to stay with each other and get married after college, she had lost her V card to a frat guy in her first month of school. But the saddest part was that he didn't want to role play her losing her V card to him the way he had always thought would happen. He wanted to role play as the frat guy and me as the girlfriend where I would have to say, but I have a boyfriend but would end up in bed with him anyway. It was too sad and he was too young, so even though he offered me a thousand dollars, I said no. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to my channel for more Reddit stories. This is Reddit Story Hour. See you in the next video.